Hello, Narnag here. Welcome back to TIS 100. Today, in this episode, I'll have a very, very quick look at the differential converter that I did the last video about, since uh, the, yeah, after the, the, the video, uh, an, an unexpected high number of people actually watched the videos, and I got some really useful feedback, so I want to share um, a more optimal solution than what I showed in the last video. And after that I'm going to look at the, the signal multiplexer which is episode 5. So first a very very brief uh, look at the differential converter. So uh, this was not it. Was that it? Yeah this was it. Okay so this is the video as I left it with a, a couple of extra annotations. So if we just run a, a quick pass through we see 204 cycles that was what I was optimizing for last time so we edit it um, there's actually a new feature in the game which is uh, useful here to also highlight um, for especially in, in the most optimal solution later and that's the, pr the concept of idle time so every machine will now record how many uh, cycles it spent doing absolutely nothing and that will count as the idle time so you see this one is 61% idle because all it does is just move the value from up to the left this one has 23% idle time because it yeah moves the value from here down and its own value it moves down this one is doing just about the same so it seems like this one is being blocked by this one because the idle times are the same and this one has an idle time of 4% so maybe the first two cycles while it's waiting for data it's doing nothing and after that it's busy all the time so this is the central roadblock if we can move some work out of this node up into the chain or further down into the chain we speed up the entire machine because this is blocking and everything up here has some extra cycles so for the more most optimal solution that's going to be uh, something to remember but for now a couple of micro optimizations so I had it at 204 cycles so someone I think it was in the comments they mentioned okay so you're pushing data down first and after that you're pushing it to the right but it's really quick to push it down and if after you push it to the right some manipulations still have to be done so it wouldn't it be faster just push it to the right first and then push it down so okay that uh, sounded like a fair suggestion so if we run it and change it and I run it you see we drop from 204 to 202 cycles so that was an excellent suggestion so that's the the version we're going with okay then another person in the comments mentioned okay so you're moving this value from the left to ACK, then you're negating it, and then you're moving it down. But that, that, that's a three-step operation to invert a number. Okay, fine, fair. But what if you instead first do a... You, if, what if you use a sub rather than a neg? Wouldn't that be better? Because then you can do the operation in two cycles and then reset it afterwards which was also a very smart uh, idea so oh, we put that one in and we run it you see we got a 201 cycles so that's all the notes to self I can remove now so this is 201 cycles and I stared at it and I thought about it and so if you if you run it and you edit it this one is idle at 2%, uh, these ones are not doing a lot, so there's not a lot that you can do anymore down here in the bottom to optimize it, because it's it's three, three cycles and you need to duplicate this value down and to the side, so I got slightly stuck on optimizing this, then I bought, and then I looked at the list and I saw that my friend RC1290 actually managed to get it to 200 cycles so I was like okay so what's he doing differently and so I, I, I removed one of the old save games and copied it and just did some some more creative things with it and then uh, it, it struck me okay so what if I don't look to optimize on the bottom what if I look upwards 
because it's only one cycle and if it's only one cycle rather than because remember there's 14 numbers that go through so if the difference is one cycle then it has something to do with setup time or with flushing the last cycle and the code down here for flushing things was already pretty much optimized but I hadn't really looked at the upside of the or, or the start of the sequence so maybe I could optimize something there so I started looking and I come to this so remember in the previous sample the right node moved the data to the left and this node it moved data from top to down and it took it from the right to down and then this one did the subtraction okay but we're already handling both of the numbers here so why does this one need to do it uh, multiple times as well so that's what I changed we take the value from up and we store it in ACK and then we subtract the value we get from the right so there's only one number that we have to pass through rather than multiple numbers and then after we subtract it we move it downwards and then we move this one just down this, so this becomes a dump pipe and then after this we do the split and we do the subtraction with the reset afterwards and if you run this we get 200 cycles so so far managed to get a, a uh, once again I managed to, to find the most optimal solution to this puzzle at least based according to the leaderboard of my friends that are actually playing the game and the publicly available leaderboards I'm in the fastest bracket so if you still have uh, uh, yeah, feedback on how to improve it even further I am more than welcome um, and if when I get enough uh, feedback about things to just improve it I'll go back to it in a later video and just, just share that with the world so with that said let's move on to the next one to the signal multiplexer so this currently once again as far as I can uh, tell this is now the fastest solution because my local leaderboard and the graph indicates uh, I'm in the top bracket so if you have a better solution please let me know I am interested so let's uh, start with the first one, the V1. You see, it has 266 cycles. That I think it places it, it in the in the the tallest pile. So this is one of the most popular solutions. It uses five nodes and only 16 instructions. So it optimizes for the nodes and instructions, but it's not the most op optimal for cycle count. So let's have a look at that one. So this machine, what do we do? We read values from in A and in B. So that's this one and that one. Then we read a value in from in.s, so that's this one. And then we have to do more complicated things. So we write the value of in.a when in s is minus 1. So if this one is minus 1, we write this value out. If in b, in b, yeah, we write in b when uh, in s is 1. So if this one is 1, we write out in b and we write the sum of the values when in s is equals 0 so minus 1 we take this plus 1 we take that 0 we sum both and we send them downwards so my first solution was okay this is the one that has the control value so to say so based on the value of this we have different logic so this one is in control so let's start with that and I'll actually add a little bit of indentation to this to make it slightly clearer to read because there's a lot of stuff going on so you see I'm using labels here so there's a start uh, with a colon so that indicates it's a named spot if there's an ins instruction with a jump with a label name the code will jump there so when execution comes here it just jumps back to start and it starts over again at move up back. so this way you get a loop and there are two other named functions uh, code functions in here and a it has a jump to start because otherwise it falls over and goes into B and B doesn't need a jump start because after we're done executing the last instruction we automatically fall back so this one is a really really tight fit so what are we doing first thing we do we move the value of up to ACK so we read in the control value which is useful because the value that comes in decides what we have to do so there is no point in touching either of these nodes until we know what what, what the plan is so to say so 
Then we use the JLZ, so that's jump if the value is less than zero. And in our context we can use that because for the S value we know we're getting a 1, a minus 1 or a 0. So less than 0 basically means it's always the minus 1. So if we have a value less than 0 we jump to the A sequence. So and yeah that says we move the value of left we move it down. We move the value of right to ACK because remember this is the value that needs to be sent to the output but the value that we got sent, we have to do something with it. So in this case we just take it and we send it to ACK because the first, and then we just move to start. And after we move to start, the first thing we do is we take a new value from up and we put in ACK. So overwrite the value we got from here. So basically we're discarding it. So, okay, so what if the value that we get from the top is not less than zero, we just moved on to the next one. So then we check, okay, is it greater than zero? Then we move here, and this is a similar sequence that takes the value from the right, and it moves it downwards, and it takes the value from the left, and it moves it to ACK, and then it uh, goes back to the top again, and we flush, and we, we just uh, oh, we replace the value of ACK with a new control signal. Okay, so if it's neither A nor B, so if it's not uh, a minus 1 or a 1, the only value that's left is that it's a 0. So in that case, we take the value from the left and we store it in ACK then we add the value from the right, so we have the sum here already and then we move the value from ACK, we move it down and then we jump back to the start so this is pretty straightforward, so we have a main function and based on the value that comes in we take either action A, B or we take action you can call it C or the impl implied default action of value 0 and if we run this, we get a cycle count of 266, and that's the, the longest chain. So this is the most popular solution for this puzzle. So, so this is a, a very elegant T-shape. Is there a way to optimize this to get even less nodes? I don't think so, because you have your inputs, those three. So these three new nodes, you always have to write some code in it. You have to do something with it. And you have to get to the output, and the only way to get down is to use at least two nodes to actually bridge down here. Until they add teleportation node, five nodes is the, the lowest you can do here. So, that's the, the first uh, solution I found. So then I wanted to optimize for lower cycle counts, and I came up with something different for that. So, the first thing you'll notice is I'm using seven nodes, so I use this one and that one uh, as well and rather than putting all the code here and having the other ones just be dumb pipes I spread the logic out because um, if all the code is in one node and the other ones are just dumb pipes that means one node is doing all the work while the other four are being bored that's not quite what we want so let's just run it so this is 203 cycles, it uses uh, two extra nodes and more instructions, but it optimizes for cycle count. Okay, and with that we actually get our idle percentages. So you see the top nodes are all busy, 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 busy. They don't waste any time. And the other ones, they waste a little bit of time. So there might even be a better uh, solution if you manage to move even more work from the top nodes down the chain. So, what is the main difference here? Because well, let's start again where we're looking at in S. This is the control signal. So, we take the value from up and we move it to ACK. That's what we did before as well. But now, we send the signal to the left and we send the signal to the right. So, before we read the value and then we had a, num a number of jumps that decided what the in node was going to do with the values that it got from the left and from the right and now we're doing the total opposite so we store the node and we send it to both sides okay so let's have a look there's a comment here emit if minus one or zero no emit on one so let's go back if we want to add um, so when do we have to emit A? Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so when S is minus 1, 
then we need to have the value of a written out. When in s is 0, we need to write the value of a and the value of b. So this value is used in both use cases. Only when s is 1, then all we care about is b, and then we don't care about a. So that that's basically my interpretation of, of this. So if it's minus 1 or 0, we care about it, and otherwise we don't. So then we send out a 0. So we take the value from, from the right, we do a jump if it's greater than 0, because that's the only time we don't care about the the value and then we read the value and we move it to ACK but then we actually don't do anything with it because we send a zero value downwards so when we don't care we send zero if we do care we still read the value from up but we move it straight down and then we loop back so and because the first instruction is to again uh, move the value from the right into ACK basically any anything we write in here during the, the program it's just discarded. So this is a, a nice way. We emit values that we care about and if we don't care about it we emit zero. On the other hand we've got the same but in reverse because we care about b when s is 1 or when it's zero because then we want to sum it. We don't care about the actual value of b when the, the s value is minus 1. So we got that here as well. We check if it's less than less than zero, the, the value that we get from from the left side here, and if so, we emit a zero, and otherwise we emit the value that we get. So what do we get? We and okay, so then we always take the value from up and we send it to the right, and here we from take the value from up and we send it to the left. So after the top nodes are done producing their values or doing their thing so to say we end up with a value emitted from this node into the, to the middle and from this one into the middle so this one has two values waiting for it and all we, we do here is we add the values because remember if it's a useful value we emit it otherwise we emit zero so if we add the useful values from both sides we always get what we want because if we only want one value, if we want the value of a, then due to how this is set up, we know that b is going to emit 0. So if we add it, any value plus 0 is the same as the value, so we don't modify it. It's the only situation where we get a number from both sides, is exactly when we want it, because then we have a 0 value. Then both are emitted. So then we add it, and we send the value downwards. And if we run that, we get a fastest solution. So, this is uh, yeah, this was just a, a look at just totally different ways to approach. So, this was the the first approach. Lots of instructions in one node, and if you run it, see it's never active, never idle, and the other ones are seventy percent idle. Well, if we move back to the to the first one, just for a comparison. We still have the top nodes very, very busy, but we did manage to shave off um, from the top of my head. It's 63 cycles, which is quite a lot. So that I hope you enjoyed the solution to this one. Once again, if you have a, a better solution for uh, for a puzzle, uh, leave a comment, and I'll uh, probably uh, just just. Uh, share an update in a next video. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.